and welcome to Religion Link TV, where my spiritual here stay. Hi, welcome to Religion Link TV, stay. where my spiritual here Guys, yes, we are doing it pre-recorded, so we can premiere it. This is the morning read. Welcome, everybody. This is episode 26, you all. We know people like to get up and read people to filth, but over here, we love to get up and read people to life because we know there's some people who cannot physically see to read the Bible. They cannot literally read to comprehend or hear the Bible. Well, they're not deaf, but they cannot read to, comp you know, hear or comprehend really the Bible for themselves. Then there's people who just pretty much uh, church hurt, abused by people of the church and have strayed away from the word of God and reading the Bible. There's people who feel the Bible is a lie. And I've even said that to a certain extent. But reading it has been fun to understand exactly what's been going on in this world, right? So, I know I got the hat. I'm feeling myself today, y'all. It's just a great morning read. We can still be in Jamaica if you want to. Put yourself wherever you want to be in this world. God gave you power to get wealth. And I'm getting wealthy off of this word. So, with that being said, I generally like to play my music in the midst of this right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull it up. And if it will play for me while we go ahead and continue to record uh, and see where it takes us. Yes, I have on these brown glasses. This really cute. Um, I misspoke in the other video. If you go back and watch one or two videos, I said it was from the Dollar Tree. This is L.A. Uh, Pout Lip Gloss. It's actually um, matte. But it's a really pink color, and I have the burgundy over on my dresser. I got it from the beauty supply store. Um, let me see. The beauty supply, okay? So that's that. I'm trying to get the window up where the music is. And we'll go ahead, play some music. Oh, I don't want to block myself out. There we go. We'll play a little music. We'll get relaxed. We should get through this read. Uh, let's say within a half hour. It's still 11.30 East Coast time. I know I said 9.30. We had a fundraiser on this channel. My daughter, she had to go out and get her medication. She has school now. We're sharing one car. We needed $7.00 to put with a bill that came up to $234. We raised $62. We needed $7, so there was an overflow. We rejoice, we, we thank you, we appreciate it. Uh, we will put the uh, overflow to good use. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll buy another Bible, because I told you this Bible and me, we done been through something in here. Uh, it's like Jacob. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled with the Spirit of the Lord until he got his blessing. Some of us don't want to fight with the Spirit of God, with the angels of God to get our blessings. I vow to God if he show me who the angel of the Lord is that's holding my blessing, I will fight them just as hard as I fight the devil. Sometimes we think the devil has us held up in life, but it's truly, 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 God may have an angel with your blessing, and you have to wrestle until he bruises you in your groin, sometimes just to receive that blessing, so I encourage you guys, fight. Know if it's the angel of the Lord or if it's, a, if it's a devil. Angel that you have to fight. Either way, people, we have to begin to fight. And one of the ways I encourage people is with the word of God. Is with um, peace, love, not kumbaya, go along to get along, just to belong, people. Listen to me. We're going to read the book of Judges. 15, 16, and 17, I do believe. And in doing so, this is Religion Week TV. And my spirit. 
bridge your ears. Stay. Let's get into the read being led by the Holy Spirit. I think this is so cool. It's bright. I'm, be I'm from behind the black screen. You guys can see my personality. You can see my passion when it comes to the Word of God. You guys can see my passion. You can see, you know, that my spirit is in this for the long haul. Remember, 2 Timothy 4 and 7 says, Fight a good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith, right? It says, I have finished my course. That means finish the race. And, keep, and it says, I have kept the faith. So, go there and read it so you get the right terminology. Because sometimes I've been saying it so long, I don't want to take from the word or add to it. But, you know, you get to talking and you've been trained to say certain things from church and all of that. Go read it. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Okay? So, today we're going to read. Today is the 28th. Again, I have this little thing. If you guys want copies of it, I can probably type it up, put it in an email, scan it, get it to you guys. It's how you can read the Bible through one year with chapters broken down from two chapters to three or four chapters, depending on how big they are. Sometimes you have to read a whole book if it's like four or five small chapters. So we're going to read from the book of Judges. Today is the 28th. Again, like I said, chapter 15 through 17, which is a small read. And the reason why I'm coming at 1130 East Coast time instead of 6 a.m. between 9 is because I was doing other things at 9 o'clock trying to raise $7. And then I used to be a photographer and we used to tell people, turn your eyes down. You know, so the glare don't get in you. There's a camera, camera, camera everywhere, guys. Plus natural sunlight coming in. But we used to, um, I was doing something at 9. I said I would come at 9.30. But then me and my daughter, we was just sitting and rejoicing. Like sometimes you have not because you ask not, right, people? So I asked this morning. I showed people I had the majority of the money. I needed $7. And guys, they came through with $62. That was amazing to me and still is. I will never forget that to the four people who donated through the Cash App. Again, donations are accepted. If you feel this word is blessing you, if you feel God has given you a spirit to support this channel, then by all means, I'm not going to reject it because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And God tells a parable about people going out and working for the kingdom. You may start at 6 o'clock, I may start at 12, someone else at 3, someone else at 6, someone else at 9, but we all get the same pay in the kingdom of heaven. That is the reward of righteousness. That's to be a son and daughter of God. And sometimes that comes with people blessing you because God says if you freely give with a cheerful and giving heart, which I don't have moderators because I can't pay them, and there's other reasons. We'll talk about moderators in another video. But that's the main reason. And trust issues are another, definitely. Um, and I definitely um, almost lost my train of thought here. Hold on. Thank God I can edit this out if I want. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't have moderators because I can't pay them. But what you give freely, which I give the word of God. I don't charge anybody for what I think I know God has revealed to me and how we can relate it to his masses without them being confused or deceived. Without killing, stealing, and destroying, and manipulating, and all that other wickedness that goes along with being on top, having your voice heard in this world. Let's get to the read, guys. It is 1137 East Coast time. And again, without the chat open... Uh, without, you know, not the distractions of, you know, people coming in who really aren't here for the word, but just for, you know, just to see if they can distract you and get you off course and like they're doing something big. You don't know who some of these troll pages are and things like that, right? So it, it's just better for me to read the word, get the revelation, reveal it to you, uh, encourage you with the word, and then as I upload and premiere, that's if you have any questions, by all means, ask. If you don't agree, I'm not the devil's advocate. I'm not going to put something in your way to uh, make you disagree and start arguing with me 
and also to agree to disagree is what the dictionary says look up devil's advocate and we're not going to do that so being led by the holy spirit of the most high god right who sets the captive free let's go ahead and read chapter 15 of judges verse 1 but it came to pass when a, when and whilst after in the time of wheat harvest that samson visited his wife with a kid backdrop it was prophesied that the woman would have a baby and samson would be delivered and she would not cut his hair that's why this kind of ties in with the jamaican theme i had this morning mentioning they are the tribes of the benjamites mentioning that they're the ones that vow never to cut their hair they keep the custom to this day certain traditions was passed on but something about the black american our tradition has been so far removed from us because I do believe we are the tribe of Judah and our ancestors whom the Christ sprang out of. So they want us to forget our tongue. Every other nation in America, every other culture, race, have a second tongue other than English except for us. We have the watered down Queens version of English and it's more confusing than what theirs is over in Britain. So with that being said, guys, Samson and his wife with a kid, he visited his wife with a kid and said, I will go into my wife unto the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. All right. And remember, there wasn't no big ceremonies. It was like when you go into your wife or this is the woman you want to be with, they set themselves apart for like two months or whatever. You go into your wife and that or you go into a woman or, you know, the man that you become a spouse. Two, and her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. Now the dad said, I didn't think you were interested in my daughter, so I gave her off to thy companion, to somebody you roll with. How many people end up with their best friend, boyfriend, husband, but whether your dad gave you to them or you decided to betray your girl and did and girlfriend and did that anyway, your best friend and did that anyway. Nothing new under the sun, guys. It's just different reasons and different seasons and different times now that this stuff still manifests itself. So it goes on to say, verse 3, And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure? For, and Samson went and caught 300 foxes, and took firebrands, which is torches, and turned tail to tail, and put a firebrand, torches, in the midst between two tails. So, foxes, torches in the midst of two tails and he and when he had set the brands on fire he let them go into the standing corn of philistines and burnt up both the shocks and also standing corn with the vineyards and the olives all right guys we're gonna get into this let me get myself situated here how's everybody doing this morning see this is so much better yo I love it. Thank you for, t for participating in this premiere. So it goes on to say, And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shocks and also the cor standing corn with the vineyards and the olives. Six. And the Philistines said, Who have done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the son -in -law of a Timite. Timnite. Because he had taken his wife, given her to his companion, and the Philistines came up and burnt her up and her father with fire. Seven. Alright, let me see if I can get it like this, guys. If I can get a little comfortable and see if I can get this morning read going like this right here. I done showed you my Bible, so no need to hide in it. Guys, this cost me $10 about almost 20 years ago. It's a reference Bible. It's a translation. It explains everything. And I won't part with it because this Bible, reading it, fighting with it, getting mad at it, 
praying to God to reveal it to me, give me some understanding for it, has saved my life. Lies, truth, everything. The lies save your life when you know who told the lie and where it originated from. And why it was even conceived in the beginning to deceive God's people. It sets you free on either side. So, let's go ahead and finish reading. We are on verse 7, right? And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, right? Yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. 8. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Etam. 9. And the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. Lehi, excuse me. 10. And the men of Judah said, Why are you come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he have done to us? 11. Then 3,000 men of Judah went, on, went to the top of the rock, Etam, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? Knowest not that these giants are not rulers over us? They don't rule over us. Because of what you did, that does not mean they're going to rule over us. Then it goes on to say, um, What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto them. Twelve. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that they may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon, my, upon me yourselves, that you will not come upon me yourselves, right? So check this out. Samson goes on to say, 13, uh, well, the, the word goes on to say, and they spake unto him, saying, No, no, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into the hands, into their hands, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him from and brought him up from the rock. Fourteen. And when he came into Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. They just fell off like heat just came to him. Boom, boom, boom. Fell off. And his hands loosed from off his head. From off his hands. And, excuse me. And and his bands loosed from off his hands. Verse 15. Now Samson is the strongest. Solomon is the wisest. Samson is definitely the strongest. Okay. And he found a new jawbone of an ass. You ever heard the story Samson killed with a jawbone of a donkey's ass? With a jawbone of, a, of, of an ass? Of a, of a donkey? Well, the God does use the word ass in the Bible, guys. Sometimes when I say ass or you say ass, it's in a different context. But the word is in the Bible. And I'm sure people who know the word of God that is in the Bible flipped it on people so that the context was screwed up you know even though the words are in the bible they tried to make it not make sense but if the word is in the bible you can use it because there's people who took the word of god and took it out of context so it didn't make sense to his people right so let's keep that in mind y'all hi <laughs> i just love my nails everything is so colorful and bright I told you guys, we do nails now, so that's a bill my daughter and I both don't have to go spend at the market. We can do it home, you know, and save a lot of money. So, 15, and he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men through there with a, a jawbone of an ass. Of a donkey, of a mule, of a we, we call a donkey, a call a donkey, a ass. 
16. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. Have you ever thought about fighting your enemy with a jawbone of an ass? Tell you, God is so peculiar in his Bible, just like his people. We're the most peculiar people in the world. I'm sitting here with my matching. I, I didn't even know. I went looking through the most struggle hats y'all be seeing back there and found this hat. And we are in Jamaica reading the morning read this morning, y'all. We have moved from the benefits, and now we are in Jamaica, whichever part you want to be. All right. So, verse 17. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Rathmalai. Rathmalai. 18. And he was sore athirst. And called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. Which were generally the people that were not a natural olive branch of God. Not a Samson, not a Moses. These were the Philistines and the other ites in the Bible besides the Israelites, okay? 19. But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drank, his spirit came again, and he revived, before he called the name thereof, Enakakore, which is in Lehi unto this day. N-E-H-A-K-K-O-R-E, -E, Enakakore. 20. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So Samson judged 20 years. Alright, leading into the chapter 16, we are almost done here, guys. One third of the way through, we have three chapters to read. And I pray that this is a better view for you. I got this old struggle chair, and it just leans back and rocks. So I'll give you a little bit of motion. Okay? <laughs> But um, let's get into it, guys. <laughs> Let me get some water, and we'll move right along. If we can keep this under maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes, that would be excellent. So, 16. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went into her. 2. And it was that at at it, and it was told the Gazite saying Samson is come hither, and they can pass him in. Now the Gazites is the strip where God told Ishmael the son of Abraham, Isaac's brother, that he will rule that land. So Samson, being you know relatives, third, fourth cousin generations, I don't know, went to the Gazites. And went into a harlot here. Two. And it was told that the Gazites. Now this is where I think Delilah comes in. Saying Samson has come hither. And they can pass him in. And laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night. Saying in the morning when it is day. We shall kill him. Three. And Samson lay till midday. And arose at midnight. And took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. You heard the story, Samson took the posts, the pillars, carried them. This is that visualization here. Four, and it came to pass afterward that he loved the woman in the valley of Sorek. Whose name was Delilah? Oh, come on. Don't freeze up now. Whose name was Delilah? Whose name was Delilah? All right. And it came to pass. Excuse me. Five. And the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. 
because he just picked up these two big pillars from the city gates and carried them up to the mountaintop kind of thing. And um, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we shall give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. So however many of them times eleven hundred pieces of silver. And I think 30 shekels equaled one or something. I'm, I'm not sure about the coinage. I know about the years as far as the scores and things like that. Let me go ahead and give you a different view now and come a little closer. And we can go ahead and keep this read going. So, verse 6. And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherein thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If thy bind me with seven green, with seven fresh um, fresh bowstrings, seven greens means seven fresh bowstrings, with that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Okay, and it goes on to say, So I believe fresh bowstrings may be these locks that they refer to. Because he said seven greens. And greens, again, is translated out fresh bowstrings. Eight. Then the lords of the Philistine brought up to her seven greens, with which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Nine. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thou, upon thee, Samson. And he brake the whips with the thread of the towel, which is yarn. Toe is broken when it toucheth the fire, so his strength was not known. Okay, so this was not talking about his hair. This is talking about some strands, some bowstrings. You go, if they're not dried, or, yeah, it says not dried, bring them, bound somebody. And this is supposed to secure them, and they can't get free. But Samson broke loose here. Nobody knows his strength still, right? So then it goes on to say, 10. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, made a fool of her. That's why God said, Be not deceived. God shall not be mocked. No man shall make a fool of God, especially not from this channel, especially not the way we're understanding the morning read in the word of God. So let's go on. Verse 11. And Delilah said unto him, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherein thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Twelve, And Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars, this is men in hiding, in wait, abiding in the chamber. And he break them from off his arms like a thread, like it was nothing. 13. And Delilah said unto him, Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me where thou hast mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weaveth the seven locks of my head, with the web. 14. He said seven locks of his head. Not seven strands, baby. Seven strands, he still have a head full of hair. He'd be strong. Seven locks cut off. The Jamaicans wear locks. He had seven locks coming from his head. Alright. I told you there's some things in this Bible they should have took off if they wanted to keep us all let all confused but there's enough in this bible to wake us up people to the truth so it goes on to say 14 and she fastened it with the pen and said unto him the philistines be upon thee samson and he awake out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web 15 and she said unto him how canst thou say i love thee when thine heart is not with me how? How can you say you love me when your heart is not with me? How can you say you love me? But X, Y, Z. Women and men play that, that, that card today. 
if you love me, you do this. If you love me, you do that. And I know I watch enough Fatal Attraction for my man. I did discovery to know both sides, man and females, out there doing some crazy stuff for love. Because somebody said, if you love me. Now, here you have Delilah saying, if you love me, Samson, why are you playing with me? Why can't I know where your strength is? Why won't you tell me? Right? So, it goes on to say, and she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, this is 14. Um, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web, right? And she said unto him in verse 15, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me uh, these three times. You know, you lied to me these three times, right? So we're almost done with verse 16 here, moving into verse 17, and we don't have long to go, guys. And, um, has not thou told wherein thy great strength uh, lieth? So she goes on, it goes on in 16, and it says, And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. Now... Oh, unto death. It's like she's a nagging and nagging and just making him feel guilty and just wearing him down, right? So it goes on to say, 17, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak. And be like an, any other man. Bob Marley was one of the strongest men in phys physicality. He took very well care of himself. Yes, he is a Nazarite as well. Yes, I also say he carries that light of the, the Messiah. A lot of us do. It wasn't only meant for the queen and the pope to rise. It was meant for the Messiah's voice to continue and carry out as well. But that's the voice. It wasn't meant for the pope, the queen, presidents to keep rising that voice of the Christ that light that's in a person is supposed to be shining throughout this world throughout this world as well so it goes on to say if I be shaven then strength will go for me and I shall become weak and be like any other man right and then it goes on to say 18 and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart she sent and called for her lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and brought money in their hands. They paid her off the 1,100 pieces of shekel times, however many people there were. They paid her off, right? See, sometimes people will sell you out for love. Just remember that, people. For fake love. For pr pretend love. Once they get your heart. Once they get everything they want. It's a wrap. They don't love you no more. Once they can get benefit off of you. Get paid off of you. They don't want you no more. So it goes on to say 19. And she, and she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. Stop believing the European tale of seven strands of hair this is seven strands of hair pretty much right here maybe a little more i still have my strength don't be deceived but when you cut off seven locks that growed from your head and just been twisted up and twisted down all your childhood from birth all your adult life you know how to rise the far right dreads be looking after that amount of time it's still clean but the thickness the entwining of the hair. There was only seven of them, okay? So then it goes on to say, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he whisked, and it means right here, uh, knew 
not that the Lord was departed from him because he told his secret and they cut off his locks and he no longer had his power and now become as other men. They will tell you that's witchcraft, that's voodoo, that's wickedness, black magic. That was the supernatural power and the spirit of God working in our ancestors till they were strong, they were wise, they were kings, they were mighty, they were royal priesthood, they were peculiar strange people who fought wars with donkey jaw donkey jawbones and uh, the at the jawbone of an ass and, and whose hair was their strength. And you cut your hair today, people. Wondering why you're weak in some areas. If not all. To those tribes, to that tribe that it pertained to. The Nazarites is the one God rose up. Particularly Samson. But I know he had other Benjamites that took the same vow. So, 22. Oh, 21. But the Philistine took him and put him out of his eyes. And brought him down to Gaza. And bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Always trying to throw God's people in prison. Plantations. Enslaved camps. Keep the body strong. But weak in the mind. Right? Kind of situations. Because you know all they do in prison is work out. But mentally some get educated. But most of them sit there. And waste the way come out needing all kind of depression and bipolar medications and therapies as a strong black man but they have no mental capacity to stand on because of the prisons that we've been bound in part and due to the curse of Deuteronomy chapter 28 15 through verse 68 I mean we gotta own some of the responsibility here that's why I love the way God will have me teach this word cause I'm not gonna sugarcoat it I'm not gonna pamper it, powder it, pet it smooth it over, make it fit me, you or anybody else just to have friends or be accepted the word is what the word is 21 22 how be it the hair of the head began to grow again after he was shaven 23. The lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. See, other people rejoice when we get delivered into the hand of the enemy. You don't think they out there rejoicing? So why can't and why should not God's people rejoice when the enemy is put into our hands? And we have uh, dominion over them that's what the world don't want that's why they fight so hard to keep us in the prisons mentally and on the plantations of the modern day prisons bound especially with this bible if you really don't understand it you know what I'm saying so 23 then the Lord of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great fact sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. 24. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. See, there's people who think this world belonged to them. And there's people who know God meant this world and part of this world to belong to them, to us. It's just that the land they have belonged to us and they don't want the other parts of the land, which is the Alaskas and the non-habitat, the caves of the world where, uh, where the sun don't shine, you know, like the Caucasus Mountains and things like that, right? Come on, people, work with me here. Yes, 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 work with me. Alright, so we are over on verse 25, have to go to 31 in chapter 16. In 17, I only have 13 verses, we'll breeze through and we shall be done. Verse 25, and it came to pass when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us, which is performed for us, a sport. Like, you know, come out and do like the Olympics kind of thing, right? 
And they called for Samson do some freaky stuff since he was the strongest man in the world, right? Prior to Delilah cutting his hair off, it's starting to grow back. Bring him out here. Let him do some tricks for us, right? And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. 26. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may uh, feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now I believe his eyes is still kind of gouged out and he can't see here. 27. Now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the Philistine were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Watson, spectators. 28. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, let's go ahead and change it up a little bit here give you a little bit of different view come in a little bit how's everybody doing today god bless you thank you for hanging out with me we're almost done this is the morning read we know like we know people like to get up and read people for filth but we like to get up and read people for you know to life life more abundantly and this word truly does bring life to the soul that wants to receive it Spiritually and historically is what we're learning through these morning reads. So it goes on to say, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, and I said every time people in trouble, want to get out of trouble, need help, Lord God is the first person they call. I say call upon Lord God prior, and this won't happen. Just like Jesse Smollett came out, and I'm going to do that video Oh, my faith, God, I wouldn't be my mother's child if I came out here and lied and wasn't truthful. And your faith, did not your faith kick in? Did not God kick in before you committed that crime and told that lie? I'm just saying. So that's going to be a good topic sometime throughout the day after this. Okay, guys? But right here, oh, Lord, verse 28, Samson called unto the Lord. And said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Just let me see again, Lord, so I can avenge these Philistines. And I was like that. I was in the world. I was being led astray. I was leading myself astray because I'm not really a follower. I was making choices to do what the hell I wanted to do. And it wasn't really hurting people. It just wasn't always lining up with Christianity. because, And then that would make you look like you're doing a lot of things wrong. But truly, I really wasn't. I was, I was fighting against authority who was out here telling lies, such as I am still, you know, to this day. With, with respect, you understand? It's not a rebellion. It's not a waywardness. It's not an at-use risk. It's not none of that... Oh, uh, adult ADHD, you know, it's not mental health. It's none of that. It's just knowing the word of God and knowing that uh, I, I, I'm gifted in it. It's one of my gifts and talents. It, 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 it's one of the gifts of prophecy I desire. Although I never call myself a prophetess, I call myself a child of God. So Samson says, it goes on in 29, and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left hand and Samson said in verse 30 let me die with the Philistines and he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and, and upon all the people that were therein so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life Go figure, right? That's strength. That's God restoring your power, your might. Uh, cry out to the Lord. It's okay. Um, you see, you know, the vulnerability in that, you know, asking somebody for $7. Cry out to God. Like, my eyes wasn't gouged out because I hate asking people for anything. But sometimes when you humble yourself and you come before the masses with sincerity and do the right thing with the money... There are people to help you restore your eyesight, keep your lights on, uh, keep things going so that you can keep coming before them. So there is true generosity and giving going on. 
on YouTube and in the world, people. Whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's clothes, whether it's the word of God, whether it's people just being generous, however, um, they're doing it from a, a, a place of giving, a cheerful giving, and gladness of heart, right? So it goes on to say, and Samson, uh, 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 I read that, 31, the last verse is 16, then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtaol in the burying place of Manaha, his father, and he judged Israel 20 years, okay? That's the story of, of Samson and Deliah, y'all. Have you ever heard that before? You heard it, but has it came back to you? Uh, brought back any remembrance as the Holy Spirit likes to? You heard the full account of it? Um, and that's what happened. He met a woman, fell in love with her. She talked him out of his strength. He got his eyes gouged out behind it and then cried out to God because he wanted to come back. He wanted to repent. You know, once you turn away from God and follow other people, this is possibly what's happening to you and you don't even know it. Your eyes may not be physically being gouged out, but people could be leading you astray to gouge out your pocketbooks, to gouge out, you know, your house account, your bank accounts, your your, your your materials, you know, your your lifelong inheritances. 31. Oh, we read that. So, chapter 17. Let's go, y'all. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah, led by the Holy Spirit into chapter 17 of the book of Judges, y'all. So, it goes on to say, And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, Let's go there. 13 verses. About which cur curseth and spaketh of also in mine ears. Behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. 3. And when he had restored the 1100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated my my silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image now therefore I will restore it unto thee y'all get that verse 4 yet he restored the money unto his mother and his mother took 200 shekels of the silver and gave them to a founder who made thereof a, a graven image and a molten image. Two different things here. Both idolatry and pagan worship in the eyes of God. And they were in the house of Micah. Five. And the man Micah had in house of God's little G. And made an ephod and a teraphim. And consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Six. In those days. There, now I don't know if this is the book of Micah. Or if there's another person named Micah. If so, during these morning reads, we're going to get to that book and we'll be able to see if it's the same Micah. So keep the name Micah from the book of Judges in the back of your spiritual mind. That way, as we move forward in the word of God and we come again across this name again, specifically the book called Micah, to see if he's the one with other gods in the house of God and if he changed. He may have changed by the time we get there, right? He may change by the time we get done reading the book of Judges. Who knows? You just have to stay tuned to the morning read because this is Spin Religion Week TV and my spiritual ears say. <laughs> you just have to stay tuned and see. So, verse 5. And the man Micah had in house of gods and made an ephod and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Six, in those days, there was no king of Israel, but every man did that which is with right, which is what was right in his own eyes. And there's a scripture that says, there's a way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction and the end thereof is death. So be careful with that, right? But I guess at this time, God didn't have anybody over Israel. Israel didn't set anybody over themselves. 
it was kind of lawless but again when you know the word of god and you walk after his commandments and statutes it doesn't matter who's governing you or who's looking over you or what covering you have you will always begin to just do what's right to the best of your faith's ability in the eyes of god who truly only matter here y'all so it's just like i tell my daughter she's going to be 26 next month I don't care. She has her dad last name, but you have my upbringing. And wherever you go, remember, you represent me. Do me justice. I don't embarrass you or mistreat you or, uh, you know, I'll talk. You, you, know, you know what kids do. She's grown now with her own two kids, but I'm saying growing up. Don't do this when just because I'm not there. It's called integrity. Whatever you do in front of me, that's what you do when I'm not looking. And that's what God expects of his people. That's it. So it goes on to say here, 17. Let's wrap it up. I'm in verse 7. Uh, verse 6. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. 7. And there was a young man of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who I believe is the ones furthest removed from their uh, culture, history, uh, upbringing, way of life, ancestry is the black Americans over here living as uh, African Americans. And so, you know, uh, we've mixed, mixed and mingled, you know, throughout the years. Um, but yeah, predominantly, this is the tribe that lost everything. Or they tried to make us forget everything according to Psalms 83. So, verse 8, 7. And there was a man of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. Because remember, Levites got to live in every tribe, didn't have to pay rent. They are, their inheritance is of the Lord. Go back and read the book of Deuteronomy to be clear on that. 8. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem Judah to sojourn where he could find a place and he came to Mount Ephraim to choose a house of Micah as he journeyed nine and Micah said unto him whence cometh thou and he said unto him I am a Levite of Bethlehem Judah and I go to sojourn where I may find a place remember birds have nests and foxes have holes but the son of man has no way to lay his head right how about you try letting him rest his head in your heart? Let's see how that works out for you today, right? Go ahead. March 28, 2019. It's around 1220 East Coast time. Go ahead and say, Lord, I open up the door. I understand in the book of Revelations it says if you stand at the door and any man open up and let you in, you will sup with them and he with you. Try it. So... 9 it says and Micah said unto him whence cometh thou and he said unto him I am a Levite Bethlehem Judah and I go to sojourn where I may find a place and Micah said unto him dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year in a suit of apparel and thy victuals so the Levite went in it was appropriate for people to put the Levites up and take care of them. Because God didn't really give them too much inheritance, a little bit of land. But uh, he said their inheritance is in him. And I think that's unique, Haiti. I think that's unique to the Haitians of the world. 11. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. 12. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. 13. The last verse of the read, you all. Then, then said Micah, Now know that I, the Lord, will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. It'll do you some good, y'all, to have a Levite. I know you've been passing up people throughout this world. You've been turning your nose up to certain people. People been trying to minister to you and give you the word of God, right? And what have you been doing, people? What have you been doing, people? 
you have been rejecting people and passing people up and you know God says some people in this Bible know it's good to have a spiritual priest know it's good to have somebody of God amongst them so Micah who had a house of little gods was glad to see the Levite come amongst them you know what I'm saying and dwell with them now he may learn of God we have to read this has been episode 26 of the morning read thank you guys so much for tuning in we are going to go ahead and get this music to pull up again um again I try to keep the morning read under an hour but I think it's important not to rush through it not to vex the Holy Spirit um Again, this song that's going to come on is called Relaxer. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Again, I think, you know, it's important not to vex the Holy Spirit. The song that's going to come on eventually is called Relaxer, y'all. This song is called Relaxer, y'all. It's important not to vex the Holy Spirit. I do apologize for going to an hour. It used to be two hours and some change. I've gotten it down to under an hour. Um, we have read 26 days straight the Word of God. We started on Deuteronomy chapter 5 publicly together. I was going live, 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 but it's easier for me to do it this way, get the word out, explain it to you, and then now we can both sit back and be in a live chat and, 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 and ask questions and answer questions about what was said. Um, I know people like to get up and read people for filth. Over here, we like to get up and read people to life. We will be reading Judges chapter 18. And 19 tomorrow, okay? And we'll just have to follow the Holy Spirit, search out these scriptures. Um, you know, God says, Christ says, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And I do believe the kingdom of heaven is not only in my heart, but in the word of God on this channel and, and throughout some parts of YouTube in the world. I do believe that. I believe Christ is the kingdom of heaven. And if you follow his ways and follow his teachings, he reveals God to you through the words, through who he is. He shows you. Um, what I want to say, Psalms 119 and 105, let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet light unto your pathways y'all why so wherever you step in this world right it will be bright and wherever he leads you you shine his light that's important people psalms 119 and 105 um what else i'm gonna come back with the jesse smollett update and that will be the last time i do any kind of celebrity news we're gonna go over to religion wing tv live and do lives i explained to you in that video called dramatic changes with the right mindset is good this is religion wing tv and my spiritual ears stay hi hi this has been religion wing tv thank you for watching shalom and god bless